Last week, I went to Free Comic Book Day at my LCS to pick up some free comics for me and my kids. But when I got there, I found out that they had about two dozen 25 cent bins set up outside. And so I was super excited to be able to get some awesome comics for only 25 cents. But I was a little bit bummed because I didn't get there until 4 o'clock because I didn't know they were going to have these 25 cent bins. And so, of course, they'd all been picked through. However, I was still able to get lots of awesome books. In fact, I still bought 120 comics that only cost me $30. Now, most of those were just books to fill in some of my runs, and I was super excited to add them to my collection. But I still was able to find a few keys that I wanted to show off to you. First of all, we have Green Lantern Corps Quarterly, number eight, which contains the first cameo appearance of Kyle Rayner, who of course goes on to become one of the most popular Green Lanterns that is out there. Next up, we have Action Comics number 689, and this was a big book from my childhood because this followed the death of Superman, and this was his resurrection and the debut of his black suit that ended up being part of what regenerated him. Then we have Clandestine number one, which of course is the Clandestine's first comic series, and it contains the first appearance of Albert Destin. And of course they had a role in the Miss Marvel TV show. Next up, we have Namor 26, and this is the first cover art by Jay Lee. Now, I've grown to at least appreciate his art, but as a kid, I completely despised it. And this was especially true because my favorite artist at the time was his brother, Jim Lee. And of course, his art style is super different. And so not only did I not like it, but I felt like he was just a super disappointment because like, your brother is Jim Lee. Why can't you make art like him? But over time, I've come to appreciate it, even though it's still not really my favorite style of art. Some of this type of art, which I don't even know how to describe it, it's less realistic. I don't know, it's kind of like Sam Keith. I didn't like him as a kid either. I've grown to, to admire it, um, even though still, yeah, I, I much prefer Jim Lee's art. Now we have Excalibur number 31, which is the first appearance of Vega Superior, which is the son of Krokoa. And this book picked up some heat uh, a couple of years ago when it was revealed Krokoa and Erico, I guess that's how you say it, have relationship together. And so they thought, oh, well, maybe this is going to bring back Vega Superior. And of course, at some point it might. And this book will probably jump in value when that happens. Now we have a few books that kind of go together. We have Night Mask, number one, Justice, number one, and Kickers, Inc., number one. So each of these books contain the first appearances of their title characters, and they're part of the beginning of the New Universe line. And if you don't know what that line is about, Marvel, back in the mid-80s, decided to create basically a whole new comics universe with its own continuity, and it really didn't take off. And so these books are pretty cheap, I mean, all the time to buy. But in the last few years, Marvel has imported a couple of these characters into the mainstream Marvel continuity. Certainly the most well-known example of this would be Starbrand, but Night Mask in a different iteration has also been in the mainstream Marvel universe. And so I wouldn't be surprised at some point if you see some of these other characters. And of course, if they come into the mainstream Marvel universe, then maybe someday they pop up in the MCU. And these books that I'm sure can routinely be found for a dollar or less will all of a sudden be worth a little bit of money. And one of the things that's impressive about these books and a lot of the other ones, that even though they were just in 25 cent bins, uh, a lot of them are pretty high grade. And so I'm really happy to add them to my collection. All right, next up we have Bloodshot number seven, which contains the first appearance of Ninjak. And this is similar but different to these new universe characters in that nobody really cares about these Valiant characters right now. But I wouldn't be surprised at some point if some company buys the license to these characters and starts making more of their comics, and that might lead to movie deals. Of course, there was a Bloodshot movie just a couple of years ago starring Vin Diesel, which I don't think did too well. I actually haven't seen it myself. But I do think these characters will see the light of day again. Now, I remember as a kid back in the 90s that all these Valiant books were super hot, and I actually had a copy that I bought off the newsstand. And it was one of my most treasured books at that time because it's worth a lot of money. But now they've lost most of their value because people don't really care about these characters anymore. 
But again, I think eventually, I mean, who knows, 5, 10, 15, 20, I don't know. But eventually, I, again, I think we will see these characters become popular. And so you might have a book like this jump up in value once again. And so, like I said, I want to spend a lot on it, but you get 25 cents or a dollar. It's a great book to add to your collection. And, and, and just a, yeah, a, first, a cool first appearance for hardly anything. All right, these next books aren't keys, but they're high-grade Bronze Age books. And so if you can get that for a quarter, then I mean, what you gotta take it, right? So we have just some Micronauts. Here's number 24. And I guess I didn't put these in order, or maybe they're descending order. 21, 14, 13, and 12. And then jump up, I thought I was done. And then 32. And so a dollar fifty for these, yeah, all high grade, yeah, Micronauts books that came out in the Bronze Age. Yeah, again, sign me up. And finally, I just want to show off a few of my favorite covers from the rest of the run fillers that I got. If you know me, you know that I'm a sucker for battle covers, and so I think that's what most, if not all, of these are. First up, we have Ghost Rider number 17, which has this awesome Mark Teixeira Ghost Rider Hobgoblin battle cover. And I've always been a fan of both of these characters, but in the past few months, I've become an even bigger fan of the Hobgoblin because there's a fellow YouTube creator named Manny the Hobgoblin Collector that just puts out a lot of videos about this character, and it's really made me much more interested in him, and so I appreciate those videos. Manny, if you see this, keep up the good work. Uh, we have Ghost Rider number 29, which has this awesome Andy and Joe Kubert. Uh, battle cover obviously between Ghost Rider and Wolverine and speaking of Wolverine this isn't a full battle cover uh, but it's a nice little face-off Fantastic Four number 395 with Wolverine and the thing and finally you know I love my Wolverine we have Namor number 24 which is a battle cover between Namor and Wolverine and actually I don't really care for this cover too much but it's Wolverine battling someone so for a quarter sign me up and a Namor battle cover that I do like a bit more is this one number 41 where he's obviously battling War Machine and I don't think there's a ton of War Machine battle covers that I'm familiar with and so I thought that was a, a pretty cool one and one again happy for 25 cents to get and then we have another Ghost Rider battle cover against Deathlock, Deathlock number 10 and Deathlock is a pretty cool run. There's a lot of nice covers on that one. Some Punisher crossover, some Doctor Doom, and, uh, and this is another one that I'm happy to add to my collection. And next we have X-Factor number 33, which isn't a battle cover, obviously. But I thought this was just a really cool cover of Beast. I'm not a huge Beast fan. This is by Walter Simonson. And he's another one, uh, like Jay Lee, whose art has grown on me over time. Uh, and I, I like his much more than Jay Lee, uh, then and now. Uh, but it's one that I used to not like at all, uh, but, but I really like it. And I really like this Beast cover. And finally, I'll show you the last book. And this really isn't a, a cover that's you know, super special or anything like this. It's just one I forgot to pull out. Uh, it's Lethal Foes of Spider-Man number one. And this is a mini series. And I'm assuming there's a mini series I got as a kid called The Deadly Foes of Spider-Man. I'm guessing this is a sequel to it. Uh, it came out later, and so I'm not sure about that. If you know down below, tell me, is this just a sequel to that? It's gotta be, right? Uh, but anytime you can get any book that says Spider-Man on it, and number one, four a quarter, I mean, come on. So there you have it. Lots of awesome books for just 25 cents. I'm super happy. Next year, I'm gonna get there when the doors open, make sure that I am there picking from the beginning. Because again, I got a lot of awesome books this year. And if I had more time, I think I would have gotten more. I had a meeting to get to, so I had limited time even to pick through the bins. And uh, so, yeah, I was kind of flying through and probably missed some that I would have loved. Uh, so I got 120 this year. Uh, next year, I want to at least double that number. But uh, yeah, again, for 25 cents, it's just awesome. So tell me in the comments below, which of these books did you like the best? Or what books did you get on Free Comic Book Day that you're excited about? Of course, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I'd really appreciate if you'd consider doing so. Thanks for watching, and as always, look forward to the next one.